Hello, everybody. My name is Mustafa. Today, I'll talk about high-level APIs, but I'll keep practitioners like you in mind. So to keep the practitioners in mind, we'll define an example where you can improve user happiness by power of machine learning. And we'll, after we're defining our example project, we'll use pre-made estimators to start our first experiment. Then we'll experiment more with every feature we, we have by feature columns. And we'll introduce a couple of pre-made estimators that you can experiment more. And we'll learn how can you experiment other modeling ideas too. So there are a lot of topics we will cover in this talk. And we'll also talk about how can you scale it up and serving so that you can use it in your production. Let's talk about estimators. So it's a library that lets you focus on your experiment. There are thousands of engineers, this is not a small number, and hundreds of projects in Google who use estimators. So we learned a lot from their experiments. And we created our APIs so that the time from an idea to an experiment will be as short as possible. So to, and I'm really happy to share all this experience with all of you. Whatever we are using internally at Google is the same as the open source one. So you all have the same things. Estimator keeps the model function. We'll talk about what is a model function later, but it defines your network and how can you train or what is the behavior during evaluation or during the export time. And it provides you some loops, such as training, evaluation, and it provides you some interface to integrate with TF serving. Also, estimator keeps sessions so that you don't need to learn what is TF session. It handles it for you. But you need to provide data, and as Derek mentioned, you can return a TF data set from your input function. So let's define our project and start with our experiment. I love hiking. This is one of the pictures I took uh, in one of my hikes. And let's imagine there is a website, hiking website, similar to IMDB, but it's for uh, hiking. And that website has information for each hike, and users are uh, labeling those hikes by saying, I like this hike, I don't like this hike, this is my rating, and other stuff. And we want to use this data Let's imagine you have th this data from that website to recommend hikes for users. How can we do that? Let's def there are many ways of doing it. Let's uh, define one way where machine learning can help us. In this case, we want to predict probability of a like, whether a given user will like a given hike or not. What you have, you have hike features and user features. And where can you learn from? You learn from the labeled data. In this case, that website has whether that user like that hike or not. So what can we use to predict probability of a like? You can use one of the pre-made estimators. In this case, the NN classifier, because this is a logistic regression, or you can think it's a binary classification problem. So we designed pre-made estimators so that it can fit well to this kind of problems. This means you can use it as a black box solution. Primate estimators are surprisingly popular within Google and in many projects. Why that many engineers are using pre-made solutions instead of building their own models? I think, first of all, it works. It handles many implementation details, so you can focus on your experiment. It has reasonable defaults for incisation, partitioning, or optimization, so that you have a reasonable baseline as quick as possible. And it is easy to experiment with new features. So we learn about that. You can experiment with all of your data by using the same estimator without changing it. So let's jump into our first experiment so that we can have a baseline that we will improve. I will talk about embedded column, but in this case, let's, you are using hike ID. It may be a hike name uh, or an identification as a single feature to your model. 
And let's say you instantiate DNA classifier with hidden units one. So what this will learn, it will learn the average label for each high ID. So that may be a good baseline for your overall progress. You need to say, what is your evaluation data? What is your training data? Then you can call train and evaluate. Just by this, a couple of lines of code, you should be able to experiment, and you can see the results on the tensor board. For example, you can see training and evaluation loss, or accuracy, how accuracy metric is moving. So uh, since this is a classification problem, you will see accuracy metric. And since this is a binary classification, you will see a re-under curve for precision recall. So all of these things are free and ready to be used. Let's experiment more. Let's start with the data, experimenting with the data itself. We designed feature columns with the same mindset. We want to keep, make, it, make it easy to experiment with your features, with your data. And based on our experience, internal experience, it reduces the lines of code and imp may improve the model quality. There are a bunch of transformations you can handle via feature columns. These are bucketing, crossing, hashing, and embedding. Each of these needs a careful explanation. Unfortunately, I don't have enough time here, but you can check uh, Magnus's tutorial and Josh's video. They are really good. Let's experiment with all the hike features we have. Each hike may have tags, such as kid-friendly, dog-friendly, birding. You may choose indicator column instead of embedding column, in this case, because you, ha you don't have a huge number of uh, tags, so you don't need to reduce the dimensionality. And for a numerical column, such as each hike may have elevation gain, you need to normalize so that optimization will be well-conditioned. Your problem will be well-conditioned. And you can use opt normalizer function here. Or you may choose bucketizing. In this case, the distance of a hike, we bucketize it so that it will help the model to learn different things for different segments. You can consider it as a different kind of normalization, too. How can you use all of these things together? Just putting them into a list, that's it. Then your system should work as it is. So let's experiment with personalization. What we mean by personalization is, instead of recommending same hikes to all users, let's recommend different hikes for different users based on their interests. And the way, one way to do that is using user features. In this case, we are using user embedding by embedding column. So this will let the model to learn a, a vector for each user and put the users closer if their height preferences are similar. And how can you use that? Again, it's just appending into your list. And you need to also play with number of hidden units because you have many more features now, and you need to let your model to learn different transformations. And the rest of the pipeline should work. You will hear this sentence a lot during this talk, because it's based on that. The rest of the pipeline should work, and you should be able to analyze your experiments. Let's experiment more. We have a couple of pre-made solutions. I mentioned you it's very popular, and uh, I picked only two of them here to show. One of them is wide and deep, which is a joint training of linear model and neural network. It may help your product, or it may not. You need to experiment. So let's start our experiment. You need to define what are the features you want to fit to neural network. Again, you, via feature column, it's a list. And you need to define what are the features you need to fit into linear part. In this case, I intentionally put user ID and text crossing so that, for example, if a user always picks um, dog-friendly hikes, the model will explicitly learn via this feature, via this cross. And you can instantiate DNA linear combined classifier instead of DNA classifier, and the rest of the pipeline should work. Based on the Kegel survey, 2017 Kegel survey, trees are extremely popular. And we are introducing gradient-boosted tree as a pyramid estimator. 
This means you can experiment with neural network and gradient boosted trees without changing your pipeline. Let's start ex our experimentation with gradient booster tree. In the current version, we only support bucketized column, and we are working on to support numerical column and categorical column too. Here, we use high distance and high elevation gain, and we bucketize them, and then you can instantiate booster trees classifier, and the rest of the pipeline should work. We know that trees are not as computationally expensive as, or training trees are not as computationally expensive as training neural networks. And many of data sets fit into memory. So by leveraging that, we provide you a utility so that you can train your model more than an order of magnitude faster than the usual one. And rest of the pipeline should work. So let's say these already pre-made solutions are not enough for you and you want to experiment more ideas. Let's talk about them. Before delving into these high-level solutions that you can use, let's uh, look at the anatomy of a feed-forward network in a supervised setting. In this case, you have a network which you fit the features. And based on the output of network and the labels, you need to decide what is the loss what is the objective you want to minimize? And what, is, what are the metrics that you will use as a success metric for your evaluation? And your predictions on serving time may be different than in training time. For example, if you have a large multi-class setting, you, want, you, want, you may want to use just ranking of the classes instead of the probabilities in the serving time. For that, you don't need to calculate probability. You can use the logits output of network to rank them. So for all of these decisions, we abstracted them out under head API. So head API expect, expects you to give the label and the output of your network and provides all of these things for you. We'll see in action. And model function is an implementation of this head and network together. We, we talk about DNN classifier. So DNN classifier is is, has a model function, so it's an implementation, a specific implementation for head and network. Let's implement this with the head API. In this case, instead of DNN classifier, we use DNN estimator. And we can instantiate a head. In this case, it's binary classification head because we are trying to predict whether it is like or not like. And why are we introducing this head? Since these two lines is same as DNN classifier, why are we introducing this head? So that you can experiment many more ideas by combining different arch network architectures and different heads. For example, you can use wide and deep with a Poisson regression head or DNN estimator with a multi-label head. You can even combine different heads together. We introduced multi-head here. So it's a one way of experimenting with multi-task learning with a couple of lines of code you can experiment with multi-test learning. Please check it out. Let's say these pyramid architectures are not enough for you and you want to experiment more. You can write your own model function. We strongly recommend to you use TF Keras layers to build your network. So you can do whatever you want there. You can be as creative as possible. And after you have the output of network, you need to pick one of the optimizers available in TensorFlow, and you can use one of the head we mentioned, which will convert your network output and the labels into training behavior or evaluation metrics or export behavior. Then you can fit this model function to estimator. Again, rest of the pipeline should work. Keras model is another way of uh, creating your model. And it's very popular, it's very intuitive to use. For example, this is one of the, one of the Keras models you can build. So how can you get the estimator so that the rest of the pipeline should work? You can use model to estimator, which gives you the estimator, so you can run your experiments without changing your pipeline. Transfer learning is another popular technique we do. 
experiment with. One way of extending is using model A, which is already trained, to improve the prediction of model B. How can you do that? Surprisingly, just copying and transferring the variables from model A to model B works. That's simple, but it works. And we provide utility for you. So you can use warm start from, for example, this one line is saying that transfer all of the model A into model B. Or you can define a subset of model A to transfer from model A to model B. Let's talk about image features. We talk about embedding categorical column and numerical features. But what if you have image features? How can you use them in your pipeline without like, doing with a couple of lines of code? You can implement one of these state art image classifier, which is not a couple of lines of code. Or you can, thanks to TF Hub, you will learn a lot later. You can use this one line, just one line from TF Hub, to instantiate a feature column, which is called image embedding column. In this case, you, rem you may remember Jeff mentioned AutoML. NASNet is one of the AutoML uh, model, and it's really good. It's one of the state of the art model you can use. Here, you will use NASNet as a featureizer which means it will use only the output layer of NASNet as a feature in your pipeline. And how can you use, it in, uh, use that in the DNN classifier we talked about? Same. You are just appending it into your feature columns. Done. Then you can experiment with it. So let's say you experimented and you find some models, but you need to scaling it up. Not all of you, but some of you may need to scale your training. So you can use multi-GPU, which means replication on different GPUs. Igor will talk about that after uh, my talk. The key point here, you don't need to change the estimator or you don't need to change the model code. Everything should work just with just a single line of configuration change. Or you may want to distribute your training to multiple machines by saying these are workers, these are parameter servers, and there's one every later going on. So same. You don't need to change your estimator or model code. Everything should work based on the configuration. Or you may want to use TPU estimator for TPU. In this case, there's a minimal change in the model function. Hopefully, later, we will uh, fix that too. But now, there's a minimal change in your model function you need to do. So to use this in your production, you need to export or you, can, you need to serve. And we recommend you to use TF serving. In the serving time, instead of reading uh, data from the files, you have a request. And you need to define the receiver function, which is defining how can you connect that request into the model. So in this case, and after that, what will be the output of that model, which is defined by signature definition. So here, again, a couple of lines of code you will export your train model with TF serving friendly way. For example, if, if your request is tf.exampleproto, you can use this utility function to get your receiver function. And then you can use export set model so that it will be used by TF serving. These are the modules I mentioned, TF estimator, feature column, TF keras, contrib estimator, contrib feature column. Please do not use tfcontrib.learn. We are deprecating it. And these are a couple of talks and videos I picked. Uh, you can check it out. Thank you. I hope some of you will improve your products with the tools that we mentioned. Happy hiking. <laughs> <laughs>